It's probably a bit of a weird thing to think about at 12 or 13, but I had this idea that I wanted to make the most of absolutely every opportunity that came along and not have any regrets. I remember thinking that you don't want to be an old person saying what if or if only. of working hard, you get into habits of setting your sights pretty high, because that's what I've done for so long. Now, part of me really craves that pressure, but another part of me realise it'd be nice one day not to have that. <laughs> Doing something that no person's done before, that's what really gets me out of bed every day. Um, so no, no teams won uh, the World Cup back to back, no captains won a uh, thing back to back. You know, to be the first team and first players to do that, that's, that's what gets me out of bed. Very, very few people that retire having nailed everything they want to nail and finish when they want to finish. Oh, that's pretty rare in sport. But the fact that we've got another chance to play the World Cup, the reward's huge, but perhaps the disappointment's uh, big as well, but you've got to risk all that to, to get those rewards. Blacks in South Africa are back at Alice Park, Johannesburg. The Springboks today have claimed the underdogs tag, which they love to do. Well, it's a cold winter's afternoon here in Johannesburg, and the clash of the old foes is going to kick off at 5 o'clock. I thought a little bit about that I won't get to tour here again, but I'm just grateful to have a, uh, another chance to play in Alice Park. It's one of the great places to play. So i just trying to enjoy a Springbok test, you know, because it's one of the ultimates. Are the All Blacks going to carry on their steady march of form and ability, or can Skulkberger and the players around him try and knock one over Richie for the last time that he plays here at Ellis Park? Uh, Richie McCaw has won more test matches than I've played. He's created a culture of winning. You know, you watch him play and there's a ruthlessness. You know, I think he demands of his teammates perfection. Everyone wants to beat him. There's a lot of psyche involved with international sport. We draw a, often draw a few similarities to get inspiration through the guys that go to war or, or go into battle. And that's what those guys back in wars and that were fighting for, was for their sense of identity and who you were. I always wondered myself whether if I was in that situation whether I'd 
have enough courage and that, you know, you'd like to think you would, but, you know, you talk about being brave or having courage, well, it's pretty easy to do that because you're going home every day. one of the toughest tests you play, physically, and just how hard it is to win. There's a huge amount of respect between the Springbok players and the, and the All Blacks. Incredible test match. South Africa with a three-point lead, and bravery from the All Blacks. And Taylor to the front. It's a variation and a score! Twenty seventeen up with uh, it was three to four minutes to go and you lose twenty seven twenty. I mean it, 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 that that hurts. He's a complicated rooster. On the field's his arena. It's where he's most comfortable. He just has to play. He doesn't have to be anything else other than a rugby player. Off the field, I think, at times, it's a struggle for him. He's a reluctant hero. I would say, as a younger fellow, I was a bit shy. I wouldn't be the type of guy that was easiest to get to know. And, you know. That still wasn't easy, and I think within a team, that's something I've had to work on. I don't just bowl on in, you know, like some people have the ability to do, and just chat away it. And, and I guess that's just probably the natural shyness I've always had. folks will probably ring up every second day to see what's going on and you know they get along to as many games as they can because they love coming to watch and support but I think if you're going to talk about the Macaws in general we're a pretty unemotional bunch I just guess the way you're brought up you never say too much about what, what you're feeling and I do notice on the TV sometimes, when I, mean, I know I'm pretty happy with what happens, I'll be just pretty deadpan compared to some people. Whether it's the farming background, because I know all the people that where we came from, everyone was just sort of a bit like that, you know? We've been brought up, not afraid to show emotion, but I think just keeping it within ourselves. Have a bit of chicken, see? I'm good now. We've lived in the middle of nowhere on a farm. Famous. Nanda's birthday, is it? So happy birthday. 
but there's two separate worlds in his world. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, mother. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday dear Richard. Growing up, the valley we're in, it was it almost, it was, I say isolated, it was a community that it was pretty small, really. You didn't sort of just hang out with your friends or anything after school, you were back home, uh, they were obviously a wee way away on their farms and stuff. When I first went to primary school, there was a small school and the kids there all talked about rugby and I remember the older kids, when I first arrived, you know, you're going to play rugby and I was sort of only, obviously only five and I was like, oh, rugby. And then we used to play it at lunch times and I think pretty much from the first day at school I'd go home and uh, ask whether I could play rugby on Saturdays. I guess the first time I really understood who the All Blacks were was the 87 World Cup and especially the final. That's probably the first game I remember properly watching. I can still visualise him on the floor, his eyes glued to the TV. And then he went for a run round outside. We just saw out of the corner of our eye. Here he was doing the haka, so he'd obviously taken the haka on board. I kind of remember vaguely that I used to do that and the other place I used to practice the haka was in the shower. <laughs> Don't know why. And I had one test match recorded and I used to pretty much watch it over and over again. Oh, he was a solid boy, but he was absolutely fearless. But the thing about it was, we'd have to pay touch because the ground was that hard. And I said, no, Richie, you can't tackle him. And he'd look at you as if to say, well, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> that's it, two steps in. Drop it in, drop it in, drop it in. Yeah, fantastic. One story that I've never ever told to anybody because it was a wee bit humiliating. I think we were under 10. And I was trying to get them to bring the ball up. And Richard Stern came round and he barreled me back about three metres. And he hit me up and under here somewhere. And I thought he had broken my rib. And I said to the boys, I said, look, I've got to go home early today. I've got to shift a mob of sheep. So, <laughs> well, look, I limped around for about three days. I could see that he could play well, and I said to him, look, if you, if you get yourself fit, you know, you're going to enjoy it a lot more. And the next day, he decided he'd go for a run. And I noticed he just didn't go out to the gate. He went for a serious couple of 3K away before he turned around to come home. And I thought, blimey. <laughs> Yeah, how'd he do that? <laughs> now, I look back on it, that was pretty dedicated really as a young fella, but all of a sudden the game was a lot easier and I just loved winning. I guess for as long as I can remember I've always been very competitive. But even yeah, it's my sister, I uh, made sure I was trying to win all the time. You ask yourself, why is it so important to win against your mates, you know? But I go away angry sometimes when I haven't won. You want to be uh, the, in the top, 
uh, that's what drove me, I, I guess. Well, it did. I, I know it did. Because we'd gone to boarding school ourselves, we thought it'd be a good idea to send them. It wouldn't have been easy in that boarding house, but I mean, yeah, I thought, well, if he survives, then he'd be right. <laughs> we had to grow up pretty quick, you know, boarding school can be a bit of a shock, and I, I don't think it's for every kid. And, you know, there's times you get homesick, but every time I mentioned that to mum and dad, they said, well, if you want to be here, you know, but all your friends have gone away to boarding school, and, you know, what would you do here? And it's sort of, ah, oh, yeah. Like a lot of boarding schools, you had to sort of fit in the best you could, keeping your head down, trying to stay out of the way of the seniors. He didn't fall in line necessarily with what the seniors wanted him to do. You know, they'd try and put him in his place. And I remember some of them said, well, you're going to be nothing. You're not going to be more determined to prove them wrong. Well, he wasn't necessarily the biggest or the, the strongest or maybe had the best ball skills, but there was something a little bit different in terms of how strong he was mentally. That combined with working pretty hard academically. I got a bit of a hard time for doing a lot of schoolwork. But instead of not doing it conforming, I went harder because I wanted to do it right. I wanted to be the best at it. He's given his biggest hint yet. He may retire from rugby after this year's World Cup. And he's crossed rumours he's seeking a lucrative French contract, saying the big money on offer overseas isn't likely to know him. Yesterday, the 34 year old. It's really hard to say that I won't be playing again next year. You know, it's easy to talk about maybe if, maybe when you actually come to the point and say, I won't be playing next year and I'm retiring. So it's pretty tough to say. And I guess I've used this year to get my head around that, no, that'll be it. Yeah, people always say, be careful about turning your passion into a job, but I think rugby has been my greatest love. And like I haven't had a uh, wife and kids at home that some guys, you know, that, that stresses them out when they're away trying to play rugby and that. I've never really had those issues. Underlying feeling I've always had is that I'm just sort of in a holding time till I get on with life. You know, that, that's why it's always felt is that at some point I'll get on with life. A retired top rugby referee is crying foul over All Black captain Richie McCaw's match-winning try against the Springboks. Richie McCaw leads the All Blacks next week to the Rugby Championship decider against Australia, where, of course, he's no stranger to accusations of cheating. And former Wallaby captain and.